Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Toxic Radio at Night. We're all in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm here to talk about all things toxic and taboo. No topic is off the table. If it's toxic to our families, toxic to our culture, toxic to our country, and toxic to our way of life, we'll talk about it. When all the others decided to go toxic left, we stood firmly right. Greetings from my hideout somewhere in the rural parts of Canada, where nothing is as it seems, nothing is normal because the toxic darkness is seeping into every fiber of our existence. I am your host, Denise in Canada. How's everyone doing today? Well, I'm just waiting for my uh, pizza to cook in that oven. I didn't make it from scratch. I bought the pizza crust already made. So sorry I cheated, but I worked most of the day. And uh, yeah, so it's just in the oven now. It's warming up. I think I put too much cheese on it. But is there ever too much cheese on anything? I don't think so. So anyways, um, I am doing this toxic radio episode or show uh, by myself today there was something i really had on my mind and been thinking about all week and this is the first chance i've been able to um sit down and do this all right so uh we're gonna start with um i have three stories to tell and then i want to tie it in at the end and i turned my oven down so that uh my pizza won't burn <laughs> I am so hungry. I've only had two little bars this morning for breakfast and it's, um, what time is it? Like five o'clock or something now. So I am so hungry. All right. So I'm going to talk about uh, a story, a boot camp story, real boot camp, not uh, exercise boot camp that a lot of women are doing nowadays. Um, yeah, so this is boot camp. And uh, there's two particular guys here at boot camp. One is, a, well, they're both in really good shape, but one is, you know, probably oh, way over 250 pounds. The other guy is, you know, maybe 180 to 190 pounds and solid muscle and uh, has worked really hard his whole life, worked, um, you know, at timber mills, and cutting down huge trees and on trap lines and like kind of a backwoods guy. So he's doing really well at, the, at boot camp. New military recruit, just fl flying colors. Uh, the other guy who's, you know, well over 250 pounds, yes, he's strong with some type of brute strength, but, you know, um, and, and struggled along, but was, was doing fine. But because, um, you know, he was not as agile when they came to, up to the climbing the 13 foot wall. Uh, the first guy, the one that was, you know, wiry and in shape and agile, you know, hustled over that wall with no problem. But then comes the, the guy that was well over 250 pounds and just sort of, you've, you've seen them. There's a difference. They can be equally as strong, but one just doesn't move quite so well. <laughs> so, and you know, he's he's got a little more chunk, chunkiness on him. Well, he's there's no way he's climbing that 13 foot wall. Well, if he doesn't, he's he fails, right? So, the the um, the guy that had made it easily over the wall turned around and helped him over the 13 foot wall they did it together that doesn't disqualify you it's actually probably a, an extremely good quality to have and that's something really 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 weighing on me we don't leave people behind when they're struggling we don't attack that person and everybody could have ganged up on that guy they could have mocked him they could have made fun of him and he would have failed and left he probably made an excellent soldier um, but you know, they, he had, had a moment there where he needed some help. 
So it gives us a lot to think about. What do we do when we see somebody who has a lot of great qualities? Because none of us is perfect. We know that, right? We're, we're not kids anymore. None of us is perfect. We all have strength, uh, strengths and weaknesses. And, and when I have my team too, you know, I play into their strengths and we don't attack their weaknesses. We see how we can grow their strengths to be even stronger in that area and their weaknesses. Let's see if we can work with them and, and, and get that stronger. So you don't leave people behind. You don't attack them. You don't mock them. We're not going to make fun of them. So I thought that was a great story that someone had told me because it is a true story. I know the person that easily made it over that 13 foot wall. So I, I was just impressed. And, and we know that that's a saying, right? We know no one left behind. So, and then it made me think of, of Gandhi or Gandhi, whatever, how, I don't know how people say it. Gandhi, Gandhi, um, Mahatma Gandhi. Now, I don't really know very much about him, except again, one story was very interesting to me about this. So his, his protest against the British rule, oh my goodness, I'm pro having problems with my other tablet here, because I just want to bring it up. Um, you know, it was the quiet, silent, meditative type of protest against British rule over India. So I didn't even know that. And it was actually a nationalist movement. So a patriotic nationalist. Wow. <laughs> so that's a bit inspiring. Um, against the British rule over India. He was a lawyer. He's a politician and a writer. But he was nonviolent in his protest. Uh, I'll be honest. I don't know how many years he protested this way, right? Um, his fame spread around the world and then it increased after his death. But one thing I didn't know is that finally, and because he refused to be violent in his protest, finally the Hindus in India they said the only way we're going to be able to get rid of British rule, the only way we're going to be free, as you guessed it, the, it was war. You know, maybe civil war and, and war against the British. So a lot of bloodshed. Does that mean that Gandhi failed as a leader because he refused to be violent? And I would say absolutely not. So as a leader, he was called to lead in a very specific way. And he had to be true to what he was called. So he may, you know, if he's Hindu or whatever, we are still um, in our own ways and through our own religions called to do the things that God calls us to do. And that's how he heard um, God's calling on his life. And he's going to just word it differently. The Hindus word it differently um, than I would. But he wasn't allowed to be violent. And, you know, maybe there were Hindus in India that were very angry with Gandhi. Why do you just sit around and do nothing? Why do you just write? Why do you just talk? Why do you just walk around? Why are you starving yourself? This is doing nothing. This is doing nothing. The British are still ruling over us and we want to be a free country. I don't know enough of that history to, um, to know whether the, it, whether the people of India were very oppressed by Britain. I can imagine that they would feel oppressed and they deserve their freedom in their own country. And I have nothing against that. Um, if it took a war to bring freedom, well, that just seems to be the case, doesn't it? Sometimes these are... <laughs> yeah, ask nice. What? Brit Britain, leave us alone? <laughs> and they say no? <laughs> well, okay. Then I guess it's going to take war. But did that make 
Gandhi less great, but that made Gandhi less a leader because he refused to be violent. I would say it made him a very great leader if he was a because he was able to gather people around him to gather up a great army to fight for their freedom and to gather up all of millions of people in India and here we're at India is free you know India still has lots of lots of problems and issues it's not perfect but I'm using Gandhi as an example of a leader I'm using um, the boot camp uh, military recruit story as how you know an example of how we treat others and what it takes to be a real leader a real leader helps others up right and we don't go in and end and each other too as patriotic citizens who are trying to find unity people please can you work with me here where I'm going everybody's attacking everybody how about <laughs> Could we please try something a little different and maybe we could say, okay, I'm not agreeing with your idea. I'm not in agreement with maybe the way your approach or how you're doing things, but we don't have to attack the person. Let's find the best in each other. There is so many great Canadians and you know what? There is probably there's a lot of us on the right a lot of us conservatives a lot of us that feel like we're libertarian or have these types of ideas or that type of idea this religion or that religion or even some people on the left that are just sick and tired of the direction our country is going and the world so i can also speak to patriots around the world or uh, people that do not want to be uh, taken over by uh, the Communist Party of China. And, well, let's say Russians marched into your country, you know? So we, or globalism, or the United Nations, right? So there's some of us that are against that. We have different ways of speaking. We have different ways of getting our ideas across. I don't feel like I get it across very well. And other people might say, I'm stupid, I talk weird, I, I'm this or that. Okay, but how about, you know, maybe look at my ideas or my thoughts or my opinions and have a, a civil debate on that. Why do we have to attack the person? You know, because every per no one is perfect. Everybody is struggling. So that, that has really, really been bothering me. Um, then I go to the last story of a leader. And this story is about Moses. So Moses, again, this is all about the freedom of people. What Moses did, if people aren't familiar with that story, you can read the book of Exodus. So the Israelites were slaves in the country of Egypt. Okay. Now, interesting, this day and age, the Muslim Brotherhood, which are political Islamists. So I love every religion, every people. You're doing evil. You, you um, form a group to do evil. I'm not liking you very much. But to say I'm going to hate you, I try I really have a hard time hating anyone and I can go into why in another video because that would be probably a long explanation but so the mood is coming out of out of Egypt and again wants to enslave a lot of people and back in that day the Israelites were slaves in the um, country of Egypt and they wanted to be free and leave and have their own country outside of that. Um, I'd have to go through reading the entire Old Testament again. Um, Abraham was promised great nation. 
I think the promised land was promised to Moses after they left Egypt. So they didn't have a country of their home, own ever, um, just through events and uh, different people. The Egyptians just took over the Israelites um, and made them their slaves. So it was time for them to leave. Now, <laughs> Moses didn't want to be their leader. He uh, had faults of his own from his past. And that's long stories as well. He was, I think, very quiet spoken and not very leader-ish, okay? But interesting again, this is who God chose. For reasons we're not even going to question God about. And Moses, uh, you know, um, complied to that. He, he led the Israelites out of Egypt through a series of events. Well, you know, they're wandering in the wilderness constantly because the Israelites at that time, um, the, the different events happened, different situations, um, and the Israelites turned on Moses, got sick and tired of him as leader. They wondered where he was. You know, God took away Moses for 40 days and 40 nights up on a mountain, spoke to Moses directly. And the Israelites are fed up. They're like, we're sick and tired of this. We're going to melt all our gold and worship and melt it into a shape of a calf and worship the golden calf as our new God. Well, I'm just going to tell you that didn't work out so well. Moses comes down and sees what's happening and is enraged mad, everyone that w decided, because there was um, at least a million Israelites out in the wilderness, so I would imagine not every single person was worshiping this golden calf, but those days were harsh and dealing with this uh, grave sin against God because of in that faith and in my faith, we worship only one God and it is the true God or there is only one God. So that that's in that faith and in my faith, you know, a very bad sin. And then they had to be dealt with. I think that all the men that were worshiping that calf or maybe all the people that were worshiping that golden calf had to be killed. Now, that's the other part of the story. What I want to say again is leadership. <laughs> leadership, leadership, leadership. People, leadership looks different um, depending on the leader. Okay, so some people lead like President Trump. Some people lead like Ronald Reagan. President Trump is not Ronald Reagan. There are evil leaders like Hitler and our not so great Prime Minister Trudeau. Every leader, um, some are thrown into that position and are terrible leaders. Some are great leaders. Some are great leaders like Gandhi in a very quiet way. I would say even Mother Teresa, great leader because she accomplished a lot, but she would not see herself that way at all. And I know some people have heard bad rumors about Mother Teresa. So again, leaders lead differently. They all have different ways of leading. Some are quiet about it. Some have a very outspoken um, type A personality, outgoing, talkative. But if God has chosen that leader, if that is a leader that we know is going to help a country or help bring freedom, we don't attack the leader. If we have issues with them, how about we take them aside quietly or, you know, in private? and say, I'm not understanding your way of leading. 
you know, or I'm not sure about this situation or that situation. Can you please explain? I've made that mistake in the past with people that were leading me. And instead of going directly to that person in private, and this was when I was a lot younger, I got all gossipy with a lot of people. It started from someone else getting gossipy about them to me and then me with a group and it just went downhill from there. And that often happens. So I have been observing a lot of people attacking Maxime Bernier and I totally respect that Maxime Bernier is not everybody's type of person or may not, he may not inspire you. You may not want him to lead you. You may look for a different leader and you may not think he's the one to lead us to freedom in Canada. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just wondering from my point of view, whether we need to be openly attacking this person because from my point of view what i have witnessed with maxime bernier is a very very um dedicated person he is dedicated to freeing canadians from the united nations from giving from the cbc media right he wants to bring back the free press free speech um from not um from Canadians not being forced to be politically correct. He wants to bring that freedom back again. He has put his blood, sweat, and tears into trying to build something. And I see a lot of people ganging up on him personally. When, and out in, in front of everybody, when I think we should have maybe brought that privately with him one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if I'm confused about things or I'm wondering where the party is headed or how I can help uh, him, then I'll email him or I would ask maybe for if he has time to have a phone call, a private phone call. I am not about humiliating somebody in public. I will state a fact. I have not attacked even Andrew Scheer as leader of the Conservative Party but I said, okay, why is he making um, promises and bargains and deals with political Islamists who are basically the Muslim Brotherhood infiltrating Canada and going to take us down? So I just brought out a fact and pointed it out and just trying to educate other, other people about what's going on in the Conservative Party. We have to have hope as... Canadians I don't think we can just sit passively and just let Chinese military march in here and take over Canada and kill us in the process and buy us up or do it peacefully however they think that they're going to do this because they are I don't think we can sit passively and just let our freedoms disappear. I don't think we can sit passively and let the United Nations take over our country and lose all our freedoms in that process. I'm not going to be a global citizen. I am a Canadian citizen. And other patriots who are listening to this, you know, you're a citizen of your country. You may want to sign up as a global citizen. I'd say look and research that because... Yeah, and that's, again, a whole nother topic. When Moses felt weak, when he, you know, there was actually another story about Moses that I think is also important. There were times where I, and I, you know what, you may not believe in the supernatural, you may not believe in God. I do, and I know that this story will be true and real. God said to Moses, as long as your arms are raised, the Israeli, the Israelite army will be able to defeat their enemies that are attacking them. But he had to have his arms raised up. So obviously his arms are going to get tired after mine would get tired in five minutes. Now, did the people around him cast Moses out and, um, you know, rebuke him or make fun of him or mock him and say, you, you know, you stupid little wimp? No. 
Aaron and probably one other person held his arms up. So one was on one side, one was on the other, holding up the arms of Moses. When we see a weakness in others, we hold um, each other up. That's the only way we're going to lose this, win this battle. If we don't, if we attack each other, we're going to lose this. I watch the Americans. That's one thing they're really, really good at. They stick together as patriots, as nationalists, whatever you want to call it. As Trump supporters, you, they will not, you know, they might say, okay, I'm not sure, exactly sure what Trump just said or did. But they don't reject him at the their country. He's leading their country into freedom. Again, their country had all been sold out to globalists, elite. You know the story. And I hear over and over and over again, I wish we had a Trump in Canada. We need President Trump to save Canada. Well, what if Maxime Bernier is the person that was chosen by God to save Canada? Now, I know you're laughing. Some of you are laughing at me. You can't stand the guy. But there's others that were supporting him and now attacking him. Do you have a better solution at this point? That man has dedicated his entire existence to us to help to help us. Let's all work together. There, there has to be a way to, uh, to find unity to free up Canada. What are the options? I have, I, I don't have any other solution. I don't know how to otherwise find unity. All I see is a small group of people here attacking this group of people, attacking that group of people, attacking this person, attacking that person, attacking this person, attacking that person. How's that working for you guys? Even Alberta, Alberta hates Canada now, right? Some of Al Albertans, that's fine. But I think we all need to move in unity to help Alberta. Alberta wants to be its own country, or maybe Canada needs to become a republic like the United States, where the provinces are, provinces are even more independent of each other. So either way, right? We need to support each other. So maybe Albertans need to say, Canadians, we need your help. We want autonomy from Canada, or we want to become a republic. Unless we find unity to do that together, because I know that there's people in Saskatchewan that want that same thing, and the rest of Canada, right? If we're in BC and we want that, if we're in Manitoba, because what is going on with Canada now is not working. And we're very, very divided as a country. I am hoping and praying so hard. I want to help fix this the best way that I can. I've been making videos. I'm really, really trying to get my voice out there. This is why I started Toxic Radio to talk about these things. Let me know your ideas. How do we unify? That is going to be key. And attacking each other. Yes, you may want to be in Alberta, your own country, but can we not recognize what Maxime Bernier is doing and the People's Party is doing? There are people in the Conservative Party that support the Conservative Party and are members of that, that are equally as patriotic. They may not see the faults and that the, they may not realize that the Conservative Party is signing on to all kinds of UN agendas, that it would take a really strong leader of the Conservative Party to absolutely rip the Conservative Party away from all UN agendas and secret deals with China and things like that. So how, how are we going to do this? And how are we going to let everybody know? I think the tide is turning. I think that this whole um, last two months of lockdown has helped. We are going to be protesting July 1st in Ottawa. If you cannot be part of that protest, another way to unify is keep spreading the word to everybody that you know your community your family your friends do whatever you can um start protest speak out the at this point at this state at this stage in the game in our country i'm going to tell you now the only way we're going to find freedom 
is people are going to end up in prison. People are going to be maligned. People are going to be talked about in a very bad way from the left wing um, extremist media press that we have out there. We have to support independent press instead of attacking them. We have to be encouraging to each other. But it's, it's going to take probably people ending up being willing to end up uh, being jailed, prisoned, um, and it eventually might take civil war. I don't know. But it's looking that way. And I've talked a lot today. I hope it made sense. It's about supporting leaders, supporting each other as patriots. I'm your host, Denise in Canada. All right, this has been Toxic Radio.